there and welcome to our latest episode of the County Grand Lodge podcast uh, for our Boy Online uh, this July. I have the pleasure of being your host here this evening and I'm sure you'll find this uh, podcast pretty interesting and informative. It's certainly what I have been looking forward to for, for some time now. <clears throat> and some of you will be aware that this year uh, sees the County Grand Lodge celebrate their 55th anniversary. Uh, we felt it would be interesting that we would delve into that history and a bit more about the institution and the early formation of the institution and, and how the institution has grown in structure over the, the, the many years now. I'm very pleased to welcome our guest this evening, okay. uh, Brother J.G. McLean. Uh, needs very little introduction, as I'm sure you'll, you'll be aware. Uh, Brother McLean is the current Grand Treasurer of the, the Grand Old Village of Scotland. And who better uh, than Jim to, to come along and share his, his knowledge and experience uh, and his, his wealth of, of uh, experience in this institution. Jim, it's, it's great to have you. Uh, thank thank you. you very much for taking time out of your, your schedule to, to come along and chat with me this evening. Uh, I, I think, probably put it, we, we try and go back to the early dawn of, of Grand Lodge and tell me how it sort of was founded and how Grand Lodge came into being, if you like. I, the, that's a bit of arcane history. I mean, the, the original warrants to Scotland came We've always said 1798, although the documentary evidence for that is, is, is lacking. But it, it can't be, be far out. These uh, were almost invariably warrants issued by the Grand Orms Lodge of Ireland to returning soldiers that had been deployed to Ireland uh, to suppress the 1798 rebellion of the United uh, Irishmen. Um, now, the, the very early days there were warrants in the east of Scotland. The Grand Orms Lodge of Scotland, by that title, didn't come into existence until 1835. I, but there have been basically a myriad of other orange bodies, governing bodies. The, the, the Grand Protestant Association of the Loyal Orange Men of Great Britain and the Grand Protestant Association of the Loyal Orange Men of Scotland, kind of rival um, splinter groups that he issued he warrants. The Orange Institution in Ireland was suppressed he, in 1836 by order of Parliament following an inquiry into Orangeism set up instigated by the opponents of our institution, of which there were many even in the 1830s, so nothing much changes. The, the main charge against the Orange Order was that they had attempted the, to supplant Queen Victoria from ascending the throne and to replace her with her a uncle, Ernest Augustus, Duke of Cumberland, who subsequently became King Ernest the First of Hanover in Germany. That was the charge. The order was ordered by the then King William IV to uh, disband, and many of the lodges did so, and the Grand Orange Lodge of Ireland was one of them. Orangeism in Ireland was carried on by the County Grand Lodge of Armagh, um, and in Scotland by the various splinter groups I've mentioned. Thereafter, it seemed to be they got legal opinion that the prohibition on orangeism, if that's what it was, um, did not extend to the mainland of the United Kingdom. The, and the, so the, the Grand Orange Lodge of Scotland was formed um, and carried on. But both the Grand Lodge at that time was worth observing and the kind of rival splinter groups that came up before and after it. Um, were all male only, as reflected in the, the time and the title. You know, the Grand Protestant Association of the Loyal Orange Men. No mention eh, of Orange Sisters at that time. The very early warrants were eh, known to have been instituted in Dalkeith and in Musselburgh, and if you like, the far east of Scotland, um, and doubtless existed. Um, <clears throat> in Lanarkshire. The Glasgow at that time wasn't a great a power base of Orangism. The real the strength lay in the, the Stranraer area and what we now call, at any rate, South Ayrshire. Mm -hmm. 
Um, the Orange Order owed much of its early expansion to the coal mining industry and lodges he, he were formed, you know, a, a very rapid speed along the coal seam, a, a, you know, in a process that went on for generations, yeah. he, and indeed until the 1960s when the, the Labour government post-war um, rewarded the miners who'd fueled this country through two world wars by the sinking to a super pits built in Midlothian, built St Glen and Moncton Hall, um, and encouraged by providing housing and grants to miners mainly from Lanarkshire, their families are still there today. One family in particular, I think, is the Jones family from Lark Hall in South Lanarkshire. He founded the at least three orange lodges in Midlothian, the Bonnyrig, the Pennycook and the Gorebridge. Mm -hmm. I'm certainly aware of the, the, the spread. I know that my own private lodge uh, it spread from, from Airdrie and Shorts district. And I, I know the first sort of members came from, from Ireland. I think uh, one of your first members in a, in a row, but came from uh, Antrim or Ma, uh, to be fair. Uh, so what was, what was the operating procedure practice, if you like, at Grand Lodge at that time, while, whilst everything was spreading out prior to, obviously, the, the amalgamated County Grand Lodges forming, if you like? I well, the, the Grand Lodge I didn't have one demonstration. Parades were prohibited in Glasgow from 1821 for the best part of 50 years, but they did carry on the, in Ayrshire and in Lanarkshire, particularly around the Airdrie and even Coat Bridge. Um, but there was no mass parades like we see today. In fact, mass parades he came into being largely again when the railway started to make transport e easier because prior to that most people hardly e moved very far from the place they stayed because you, you basically had to walk it was only the very wealthy that could afford a coach and horses yeah. and so e so forth e all that changed you know in the 1820s the, the, the railways brought that the industrial revolution the coal mines, and the, this also caused an, an importation, if that's the right word, of labour from Ireland the, to, to Scotland, um, particularly to Lowland Scotland, and that was the Irishmen of all persuasions, Roman Catholic and Protestant. Yeah, as I said, I certainly know that my own lodge was a member of Shorts District, and, and I know there was a lodge in West Calder back as, as far as the sort of later 1870s, and they were part of 26 district in Armadale. So it's yeah. pretty interesting to, to see the spread of, of orangeism in this area. It's been, obviously, as you said, it's followed the, the, the coal mining. Yes, well, without a doubt, um, the, the organisation of mass demonstrations came in the eight, from the 1870s onwards. Um, and just a bit after that, with the formation of the amalgamated districts. Initially, there was West Lothian, the Lanarkshire and West Lothian, it was called, and Ayrshire. And Lanarkshire and West Lothian expanded along with Orangeism and included um, the lodges in the, the Lothians, Edinburgh, Fife, up to Perth, and Dundee. So it just got the the, the extremely large. So what, what sort of prompted that decision then for to form the amalgamated uh, I think the districts, old, if you like? The old large demonstrations that they, rather than individual districts holding the their own separate ones, you know, um, that you could hold, could host a mass demonstration the, and a focal point and it was a real show of strength. And the railways, you know, contributed to that, as I've said, immensely. So when did the, the county grand lodges form and, and split away for, or change from the amalgamated districts to, to the county grand lodges as the three county grand lodges as they were at that time before the, the East came along later? Aye. The, well, the first three county grand lodges were constituted in November 1967. We had Ayrshire, which corresponded roughly with the old, the, 
the amalgamated districts of Ayrshire. Now, the, the County Grand Lodge of Glasgow, which corresponded roughly, but only very roughly, with the parading area of the Grand Orms Lodge of Scotland itself. And then you had it yourselves in Lanarkshire and the East, as it was generally referred to there. Its full title was the much longer. It's important to bear in mind that the Grand Orms Lodge of Scotland staged the Glasgow demonstration. The, and that gave rise to some dis dissatisfaction because people pointed out, not without merit, that the rest of Scotland was financing the Glasgow demonstration and folk are just a bit a, a tad displeased, so they were, uh, as an Ulsterman might, might put it. But like everything else, it took years. It was a, it wasn't a, the formation of county grand lodges wasn't a single decision. It, it was a process of argument and counter argument that dragged on uh, for years. Um, and it was in, it was at the grand lodge meeting with George, late brother George Watson of Armadale, then grand master said, forget all discussion. You either for, uh, you are either for or against county grand lodges, and the vote was then carried. Um, so we then had the three county grand lodges. Um, important to bear in mind that the Lanark, there was several Lanarkshire districts that were called Grand Lodge districts, which always struck me as odd because I thought we were all Grand Lodge districts. But that designation was used against the government. Mullow, Blantyre, Hamilton and Lark Hall, just from the top of my head, they paraded in Glasgow with the Grand Lodge, they didn't parade with the amalgamated uh, districts. Um, and in fact, the first year I walked, uh, it was 1963 when the parade was in Newhart Hill, um, which is I think very near where it's going to yeah, in a couple major. of weeks' time. Um, I, and um, <clears throat> I remember the, the first deputy county grand master of the Lanarkshire and the East, soon to be called Central Scotland. The, the, the brother of the Reverend William Downey, um, he penned a poem which was published in the Vigilant or then magazine, and he wrote in it, Greenock, Mabel and Newark Hill resounded on that day in memory of the King William who ended Popish sway. A wee bit doggerel poetry, but what it brings out is, is quite interesting just in these few verses, two of your three demonstrations, Greenox, now in the, the County Grand Lodge of Ayrshire, yes. and Maybole is very much, or was, because Maybole slash Girman had a district number four, now sadly defunct, and that was one of the original cradles of Ordnantism in Scotland, very, very sad. Um, but the Grand Lodge on occasion would depart from Glasgow and they visit other areas. And I well remember in 1965, the, the, the demonstration of the County Grand Lodge of Lanarkshire and the East was in Dunfermline. But the Grand Orms Lodge of Scotland parade was in Shots. So the, Shot, the Brethren of Shots District 32 paraded through Shots and then in coached for Dunfermline. Um, and then the, the Grand Lodge, the folk, and all the visitors, when everyone travelled by train then, they descended on shots as a policeman, I knew the time, said, like a shower of locusts. <laughs> and he said, he told me later, he'd been on duty all day. Um, but at 10 o'clock in the morning, the kids walking about eating meringues. And, <laughs> other pieces of confectionery, because there was absolutely no savoury food left. And there were 13 public houses in shots at that time. He told me, I'll take his word for it. Um, and they, they closed at half past two. And they, in those days, if you remember any of the older ones, and reopened at five o'clock. Well, none of the public houses in shots could reopen at five o'clock. Why? They had absolutely nothing left. To sell. Um, so that's all uh, interesting uh, anecdotes uh, from the time, but there was considerable ill feeling 
because we folk felt that the folk from the country as the Ouija's, the Glaswegians put it, not only were we financing the cost of the Glasgow parade, but we financed the cost of the Glasgow headquarters at 348 Cathedral Street, you know, which is a massive hall, perhaps we should never have lost it. Um, but it, it was kind of hemorrhaging cash and the, the whole of Scotland was expected to chip in. So when the kind of proposition was put, we'll maybe have to have that uh, nice expression, a levy on the members to finance it, the are up in arms. I think that's one of the things that triggered the formation of County Grand Lodges was a, a move to decentralise away from, from Glasgow, which was perceived rightly or wrongly to, to have an undue dominance over the order's affairs. Now, uh, from what I've said, you might be able to work out whether I subscribe to that view. I certainly did at that time, you know. So when did the, 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 the East decided to split away from, from uh, Central, or as it is known now, I don't think it was Central at the time when they, no. when they split, but uh, how did that come about and, and why did the, the East decide they wanted to, to well, it was a, Sorry, it was a fairly acrimonious split. Let me say that. Uh, I've got to say that I was in the middle of it, right? <laughs> I, I don't know that I caused the acrimony. Um, <laughs> and you had very strong personalities. But the idea for the formation of a county grand lodge, for the, we'll call it the far east of Scotland, if you like, came from District 26, Arnadale, in particular from Brother George F.W. Leach, God rest him, our first county grand master. Um, and he thought, that there was an undue dominance of Lanarkshire. He felt what had happened was that the Lanarkshire districts all got together. They'd previously been separate, if you like. I hardly knew anybody from Lark Hall, but your others you met at the demonstration. He, that um, he, George thought there was, if I use the expression, a Lanarkshire mafia, I hope to <laughs> bring a, a crowd of, that's what was said. And he, whether it was true or not, that is what is believed by people. It was per, their perception. He, that all the districts didn't join it. There were 17 districts in the original amalgamated body that became the County Grand Lodge of Lanarkshire in the East. And only six of them defected for want of a better expression. They then proceeded to claim six seventeenths of the funds of the former amalgamated body. <laughs> and that led to shall we say, considerable controversy. And um, subsequently, the, the, the new County Grand Lodge of the East, after a year or two, um, abandoned that claim quite wisely, in my opinion. Well, must have been my opinion, because I'm the man that moved it. <laughs> you know. So was it, when all the, the changes were finally over and done with, everybody had their own piece of the pie, so shall we say, uh, was there any challenges or difficulties faced around the institution? You know, how was it perceived by, by the members? How did they take this new sort of outlook and structure and change? The, I would have thought most of them were in favour, but some were against. They thought the order was being split. I mean, to some extent, it wasn't that revolutionary a change. You had three mass demonstrations, you know, Ayrshire, Glasgow and Lanarkshire. And, I mean, it, was, it faithfully went around all the districts in the County Grand Lodge of Central Scotland, as indeed I had done in the uh, amalgamated uh, districts. Um, one effect of the County Grand, the formation of the County Grand Lodge of the East, in particular, is that we started to take large demonstrations to areas that were a complete stranger to them, because, you know, the parade um, went round each district every 17 years. Yeah. And, in the, in the old setup, you know, corresponding with the 17th, I mean, it was in Edinburgh in 1951, and the, the, the first parade of the County Grand Lodge of the Lanarkshire and the East was in Edinburgh on Saturday, the 6th of July, 1968. And uh, at the age of 22, I was the district secretary. In those days, the district secretary, the, well, the district was left to organise it, but the district very rapidly became the district secretary. That's the same is largely true in county grand lodges, you may have noticed, you know, if you've been a, a county grand secretary. But I organised that parade, the, and that was a massive parade, because, I, you know, I always remember the buses were parked on 
Holyrood Park as the parade went to Holyrood. And there was 265 single and double decker coaches. And that wasn't the whole of the County Grand Lodge of Lanarkshire and the East, because a bus strike he prevented Motherwell, Hamilton, and some the ones that were mainly the old Grand Lodge district from getting there. And that was a wasn't an excuse, it was a genuine bus. It's either an actual strike or the introduction of the tachyograph. Um, he, and they staged their own parade in, I think, Mullerwell. There were maybe four or five districts. And there was four miles of arch, uh, marching orange men, as the press put it at the time, from Regent Road, uh, right along to the East End Waterloo Place in Edinburgh, up the North and South Bridge, up to where the Commonwealth Pool now is, and into Holyrood. Ah, and the, the head of the procession um, was in Holyrood Park and number two district Bannockburn were still uh, waiting to to leave the region road. So uh, uh, it was a tremendous, tremendous sight and a, yeah. a beautiful day. It must have been an amazing spectacle to see so many London. Was there, was there as many bands at that time? I mean, I don't know, the foot bands that... that ah, yeah, but there was a bit better mix of bands. You had, obviously, flute, some pipe, and many accordion bands. I mean, the accordion bands were always in the, in the minority, but you'd be talking about maybe 20 accordion bands. They, they used to list the visiting bands in the County Grand Lodge of Lanarkshire slash amalgamated body program but the only ones they listed were visiting bands not not local bands so they listed the ones that came from ireland and when the, the parade was in musselburgh in 1964 under the auspices of 52 district the, there was 40 visiting bands wow. you know from mainly from ulcer but the, several from england lodges also engaged um pipe bands that were willing to play for us now, we don't, none, I don't know of any pipe bands now that will accept an engagement from the Orange Opera. I, I tried the, during my, my tenure as a county grand master east to persuade them that it couldn't be done. Um, but part of that was a little thought. Our own members would rather have had blood and thunder flute bands to be perfectly blunt. Now, you know, rather than our own homegrown Scottish bands. At one time, it was a rule in the amalgamated that the parade had to be led by a pipe, pipe band. Interesting. I, because in 1951, it was the Rings End Al and Ulster pipe band that, that led the, the parade off. I attended that parade, I might add, as a young child. <laughs> um, you know, it rained all day, but I, I really can't remember. But um, I remember reading that they, they were told that the catering bill was 100,000 sausage rolls, 100,000 pies. <laughs> Harry Wells at Collington. He did the, the catering on Hollywood Park. Incredible. So looking looking at it at Central Scotland as as it became known, and I think it was about the nineteen eighties, I think, when it when the name changed. Yeah. Uh, After determined opposition. <laughs> okay, tell us about that. Tell us about the Well, the, the East we really objected to the the, the County Grand Lodge of Lanarkshire calling itself the County Grand Lodge of Central because the Edinburgh's as much in central Scotland as Hart Hill, say. He, and we kept it up for a few years, and then he, he, <laughs> we were battered into submission. <laughs> so I think, thank you, central Scotland, then. Uh, the, the first county master <clears throat> was Alex Stevenson. Yeah. Uh, you can tell me a bit about Alex. And, and I, like he, master. A, a very capable chairman. Um, he also became senior deputy grand master of Grand Lodge. He, and he, he had definite leadership qualities, indeed it must have been a, a family trait because he passed that on to his younger brother, Tom Stevenson. And I knew Alex Stevenson for many years, <laughs> see, we fell out, but there you are. <laughs> um, you can't be right all the time. Um, I didn't really know Tom, he came on the scene yeah. a good bit after, of course. He died uh, tragically as a young yeah. young man. Alec Stevenson he, um, had a disagreement he, with Grand Lodge 
and uh, sadly resigned from the, the institution. Right. He died about a fortile, 10 or 12 years ago to my knowledge. Yeah. Uh, Hull, Hull was, was seemed to be quite central. From the information I, I've read up on the, on the County Grand Lodge and, and the early history of it, it seems to be Hull was, was quite central. I know the first sort of meetings and things were held in the old Hull Lodge Hall. Yes, I have been there many on many occasions. Uh, the, the meetings of the amalgamated, most of the meetings were there, and others were held, held in other venues. It came to Edinburgh a couple of times. Um, and, uh, you know, the uh, uh, Reminiscences of the meetings in the, the original Orange Hall, which was once described in the, by the West Lothian Courier as being a dilapidated Orange Hall. Um, and that caused the brethren of Hartford District to have a hairy fit, <laughs> something they were actually quite good at. I, and they demanded a boycott be placed on that day. Hey, but actually, not a, a proposal I particularly disagreed with, <laughs> because it's anti Orange to this day, yeah, the, yes. the West Lothian. The courier. It wasn't always so, but it was at that that time. Um, and what's now the Orange Hall was the miners, a social club. But it must be the only miners club that um, played sash and the Billy Boys. You know, when you had a two or three piece band. Of course, I well might have went there with George Leach and, and others. Um, you know, this is the miners club, and it, it was the Billy Boys. You know, uh, and uh, around that time. Uh, I worked for the National Union of Mine Workers as a compensation agent. The, and the, a certain official um, was the vice president, and he had been through the shots where he hailed from in an attempt to um, ginger support for a strike. It wasn't the, the minor strike, that came a good bit later. He, and um, he, he was aghast when in this miners' welfare club that played a God Save the Queen, the national anthem at the end of the night. So he refused to um, stand. So he, all I can say is he appeared at his work on Monday because um, he, he worked in an, an office adjoining mine with two enormous black <laughs> eyes. And from uh, any more than that, I will uh, <laughs> decline to proceed. Uh, as you can imagine, over the years there's obviously been a, a number of huge personalities, uh, I'd imagine, throughout the, the 55 years uh, of the, the County Grand Lodges. Uh, and one of those personalities I, I'm aware of is, is Isaac Allen, who I believe uh, was the only mounted Chief Marshal uh, in the history of, of our County Grand Lodge. I believe he served around 25 years. Can you yeah. tell me much about Isaac? I was a member of Bellwell 152 in Allen near Shorts. Um, and he, yes, he was the, the chief marshal and led the, the parade um, on a steed, preferably a white horse, but that, the horse couldn't always be the, the white. And he seemed to handle the whole of the marshalling himself. And remember, but large parades weren't only the, the Boyne anniversary, the juvenile rally, particularly in Lanarkshire, was a big event you know, far bigger than it is now, um, sadly. And Isaac did the whole lot, or so it appeared on horseback, shouting, no, oh, you should be down there, and so forth. <laughs> you know, he, he, uh, an absolutely great uh, character. Um, I really never saw him again after the split uh, of the County Grand Lodges, you know. But one of the spin-offs from the formation of the County of the East, and one of the other reasons why they did was they didn't particularly enjoy parading on the Saturday immediately prior to the 12th, particularly in the, the far east of the area. The, that coincided with the Edinburgh and Midlothian trade holiday fortnight. The pits were all, all closed and folk went on their holidays, so they really had to miss the walk or screw up their holidays just to get to, get to the parade. We wanted it earlier. Ultimately, in the East, it didn't take them too long. It's in the last Saturday in June, unless, of course, it happens to be in, which is the fourth Saturday, unless it happens to be in Whitburn, because it has to be the fifth Saturday to accommodate yeah. Whitburn Children's a Gala Day. But believe it or not, that was a very powerful factor in the formation of the County Lodge of the East, and to a lesser extent, the County Grand Lodge of Lanarkshire itself, and you know, splitting up the parades in order to be able to 
he acquired the services of bands from, in our case, the Lanarkshire, because bands like now were at a premium and the cost of the importing bands from Ireland just got, just became prohibitive. We used to import them also from uh, Liverpool, but uh, these were concertina bands and weren't they too popular <laughs> in, in, in uh, our area, you know. So, to, just to, to, to finish off then, uh, looking to the future, uh, do you think we will be seeing any major structural change uh, like we did 55 years ago? Uh, do, do you think there's anything like could be in the pipeline in the future for, for the, the College of Scotland? I don't think so. Um, you know, the, the county grant and the poor county grant lodges, I think, are still numerically um, strong to justify separate existences. Hey, I don't know if there'll ever be, there'll ever coalesce or require to hey, kind of hey, coalesce into hey, fewer units. Yeah. Um, that might happen. I hope it doesn't happen um, because there are these complicated reasons. In fact, some people tell me that what they would really prefer is put the parades on four, four separate yeah, Saturdays. Um, and that has a lot of merit on it. And we've actually proved, we used to be thought, well, you couldn't have hold the parade after the 12th of July. But uh, one year in, actually in Whitburn, that's yeah. exactly what we were obliged to do. Not because of the gala day, but because of the severe manpower restraints placed on the, the police by say, a, a big conference uh, up in Glen Eagles or yeah. somewhere that was to do with uh, combating world poverty and there was a lot of demonstrations all over the place. Um, and uh, the police eventually really said, you, we can't police the, the, the county of the East event on that date, nor any of it, the minor associated parades in Edinburgh, you know, mm. Bathgate, etc., etc. So we changed. That may be a minor point, but the point is that it was a successful demonstration, so it proved that it, it could be done. Uh, and that's what may have to happen, I see it in the future, because the, you know, the availability of bands is, if anything, now even worse. Well, there are fewer bands. Yeah. Bands seem to be badly hit by the COVID the crisis, perhaps worse hit than some, some, some lodges. You know, bands have folded, sadly, the, basically all over the place. Well, th thank you very much, Jim. Uh, I thoroughly enjoyed hearing your, your, your wisdom and guidance and knowledge. Uh, it's, it's interesting and captivating, and I hope it's captivating for the people that are going to be watching this. Uh, we have a rich history, uh, and it's a pleasure to hear you uh, talk about it, Jim, uh, for a time of which, what, what I felt was monumental change, but you've now explained that it, it wasn't quite so monumental. Uh, I'd just like to take this opportunity, Jim, to, to, to wish you uh, and Sister McLean the very best. Uh, again, I thank you very much for giving up your, your free time to be part of the podcast here this evening. My pleasure. Thank you, County Grandmaster. So, some brothers, I trust you've enjoyed this wee hop back in time uh, and learn more about the foundations of, of the institution. Uh, and for tuning in uh, to this latest episode of the County Grandmaster podcast, and we'll see you again in the future. Thank you. Mm -hmm.